Hello, my name is Matan, and in this video, we'll go over how electromagnetic interference affects servo applications and what we can do to mitigate it. We're going to go over what is electromagnetic interference exactly. We're going to give general recommendations for proper wiring and how to reduce EMI. And then we'll go over an example, measuring the EMI on the discrete output while implementing both good and bad practices. Let's get started. So what is electromagnetic interference? EMI is a general term which exists in all areas of electronics. It's used to describe any type of electronically derived disturbance. It's usually divided into four categories, radiative, conductive, capacitive, and inductive. We're gonna be focusing on the case of motor drives. The main source of EMI in motor drives is the PWM switching. PWM uses switches to very rapidly turn the power on and off. This switching creates EMI in two ways. Conductive EMI, which due to the fast switching, current propagates back to the power supply and can cause voltage ripples and spikes on the output of the power supply. And radiative. Due to the parasitic inductance of the motor cables and the rapid change of current, a peak voltage is induced. And because of the frequency content of these spikes, electromagnetic energy will be radiated outwards. I'll leave a link in the description to a thesis that investigates this very topic. Here are some practical recommendations to reduce EMI. Shielding. Make sure you're using shielded cables. The shield acts as a Faraday cage and reduces the input and output of EMI. There are many types of shielded cables, but here's an example of one. You can see there's an aluminum foil and metallic braid here. Both of them are acting as shields. And here is the drain wire that allows the EMI to flow to earth instead of affecting our instruments. It's recommended to use a metallic braid that is comprised of at least 85% copper. Make sure to connect the drain wire to earth. Distance. The power of electromagnetic interference weakens with the distance from the source. So simply distancing power cables from signal cables can have a significant effect. Some, for the sake of organizing the cables, might accidentally tighten all the cables together. So try distancing between these types of cables as much as your application allows. Ferrite bead. For EMI sensitive applications, installing the appropriate ferrite bead on both the power and signal cables can help tremendously, as we'll see in the example. The ferrite bead acts as a filter and can significantly reduce EMI. Proper connections. Proper tightening of connections and proper soldering is important. Loose connections may result in a higher impedance and thus lead to noisier signals. Different power supplies. It's preferable to use different power supplies for EMI generating and EMI sensitive applications. If we have, for example, motors and IOs, and we supply power to both of them from the same power source, some of the EMI generated by the motors might have an effect on the IOs. So if you're experiencing EMI, using separate power supplies might be the answer. Short cables. Think of your cables as antennas. The shorter the cables, the less EMI they'll intercept. Twisted pair cables. This is especially important for differential signals. If signals experience relatively the same interference, then the interference will be negated. Also, twisting the cables reduces loop area, so any induced voltages due to a changing magnetic field will be reduced. Single point grounding. Ground loops are undesirable and are a source of EMI. So connecting the grounds to a single point can help eliminate them. This includes the power supply and any other device connected to the drive. Proper wire routing. The larger the application, the more effect wire routing can have. Proper wire routing is important to reduce EMI via intermittent grounding of the shield, for example, and is good practice in general. Here's the system I'll be using for our example. 
we have two motors that will be turned on and generate EMI. And here, we have an LED that is connected to a discrete output powered by a separate power supply. I'll be measuring the EMI created on the output while implementing both bad and good practices. It's important to note that while measuring signals, some sort of load must be connected, such as a LED in our case. Otherwise, the measured signal is a floating node, which is much more susceptible to EMI and isn't a realistic test case. In our example, I'm going to focus on grounding, cable shielding, ferrite beads, and distancing. Let's start with the bad practices. You can see my motor cables, which are the principal cause of EMI in this case, aren't shielded or grounded. Also, the driver chassis isn't grounded. With both motors on, we get a peak voltage of around 8.4 volts. Now, I'm going to bring the motor and output cables a bit closer together to see if that has an effect. OK, it raised the peak to around 10 volts. Now, let's switch to the good practices. Here we can see I'm using the shielded cables I showed you earlier. The motor cables are grounded using the drain wires, and the driver chassis is grounded as well. Let's look at the measurements. We can see our peak now is around 2.7 volts. We've reduced it by close to 70%. As you can see, one of the cables already has a ferrite bead installed. When I installed a ferrite bead on the other cable, it didn't make any noticeable difference. Now let's go back to the poor practices case and see what effect the ferrite beads have. I'm installing the ferrite beads on the motor faces. We can see the peak has dropped down to 4.7 volts, a drop of around 50% from the original poor practices case. To summarize, we went over these guidelines to reduce EMI. Shielding, single point grounding, distancing, proper connections, different power supplies, short cables, twisted pair cables, and ferrite beads. That's it for this video. Hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching and see you next time.